understand that these things happen because it could be a direct result of what I've done in the past, what my, my child has done, that can cause a sickness in a child. Sin is a direct cause of illnesses within our people, right? This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non violent Bible-based movement. IUIC. That's a great question, sis. How you doing? I'm good. What's your name? Chantrice. Chantrice. What's your name, bro? Chantrice. John Tell. John Tay. John Tay. Sorry about that. It's okay. Gotcha. What's your name, bro? I'm with the shopper. Did you come up here with John? All praise. All praise. So the, the, question that, the question that you asked, sis, was a heavy question. Because a lot of our people want to understand why our children are born with different ailments and things of that nature, right? In John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So he saw a man which was blind from his birth, right? There's a lot of information in the scriptures that our people don't really know about, right? Right. That's the reason why, I mean, I heard that you had doctor talking about Eve ate the apple and things of that nature, right? All of those different things are misconceptions and they're not truths according to the Bible. Right. The Bible's a very plain book once we start applying the laws and we start doing it, right? Read that again. Verse 1, and, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So a man which was blind from his birth. Being blind, that's a that's an illness, right? That's a that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a harsh thing. Yeah. Right? So let's see what the apostle asks. John 9, verse 1. Read it again. It's the book of John, chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Read on. And his disciples asked him. And his disciples now asked him because Jesus walked <coughs> over. He saw a man that was blind from his birth. And his disciples, his students, asked him what? Say, Master. He said, Master. They're talking to Christ. Mm -hmm. Who did sin? He said, Who did sin? I'm Who right. did sin? Right? Read. This man? He said, This man. Now remember, he was blind from birth. Mm -hmm. How can he be blind from birth and sin? Right. Right? Because that's the question that we ask, right? right. Read that again. From the top. Verse and two. his disciples asked him, saying, Master, did sin? Ask you, who did sin? They asked, who did sin? Read. This man? Said, this man or? Or his parents. Or his parents, right? Now, why do you think they would ask if this man or his parents would go? How you doing, bro? We go, the sis had a, had a great question, a question that a lot of our people want to know about in regards to children being born with different ailments and why would God do these things to people, right? So read verse 2 again. Wait, wait, verse 2, and his disciples asked him, saying, uh -huh. Master, who did sin? So he asked, who did sin? So sin is a, illnesses? Sin is a direct cause of illnesses within our people, right? But it's, 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 it's a lot more to it, though. Read. This man? So he asked, this man, meaning that man that was blind from birth, so that means he was a child, and he asked, did he commit a sin? Read. Or his parents. Or his parents. Read. That he was born blind. Because he was born blind. <laughs> right? So Christ is about to explain something to you. Read. Jesus answered. So Jesus answered what? Neither had this man sinned. Christ said, this man didn't sin. Read. Nor his parents. Nor his parents. Read. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. That the works of God would be made manifest in him. So the reason why this man was born 
blind and had an ailment or whatever, is because his purpose was for the works of God to be made manifest, for him to be healed, and they show the power of Christ, right? But they asked Master who did sin because we're dealing, sin is a judgment from the Most High God. Right. What the Most High God deals with in the Bible is we are regenerated back on the earth. Right. Hey, give me Exodus chapter 20 now. What is it, verse 8? Verse 5. Verse 5. I'm going to show you something about the scriptures that our people don't understand. Is that, well, I would, this is not the first time we're here on earth. Hold your peace, bro. Yeah. This is not our first time here on the earth. Our body, our spirits are regenerated back on the earth right. over and over again. It's not reincarnation when you die and you come back right. as a damn tree or a plant or an animal and things of that nature. No. The Bible says we are regenerated. Watch, it's going to show you. Read. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Exodus 20, verse 5. And I want Ecclesiastes. Get, get the stuff in Ecclesiastes. Read that. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. So one of the laws is that we're not to serve other gods and not bow down to them. Read. Nor serve them. Nor serve other gods. Read. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquities of the Father. He says he visits the iniquities of the Father. That's right. That's why they. That's why his that's right, right, disciples right. understood that the child was born blind. Okay, Master, who committed iniquity? Who did sin? This man or his parents? So God says, visit the iniquity of his fathers for what? Upon the children. Upon the children. <coughs> Until the third, until the third and fourth Go ahead. generation of them that hate me. Of them that hate me, right? So basically we come back around now within the third or the fourth generation. It's not, you don't come back as your, your son or your daughter, but as generations go, you pass on your spirit. There's a time when your spirit comes back on this earth. Right. It's not the first time we were here. And we deal with the direct results of sin. Right. So some of it is a judgment from the Most High God based on, it could be based on how we once lived in a prior life. And the Most High said, you know what? I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let nothing happen to you at all in this life. Right? Bro, hold your peace. Please, please hold your peace. I understand that. I understand. Hold your peace. Now you see how confusion comes and you allow people to leave. Relax. We're going to let you speak. Right? So read that again. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 5. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, Go ahead. visiting the iniquities of the fathers Go ahead. upon the children, upon unto the third and fourth generation. Right, so our iniquities are being judged upon the third and fourth generation. So the reason why I would choose, I have a son that was born with autism, special needs. We can ask God, why did these things happen? We understand that, but with these scriptures, you get comfort. You're Romans 8, 5, and 14. With the scriptures, they answer our questions, though. It's not a, a time to be sad, right, and things of that nature. We understand that these things happen because it could be a direct result of what I've done in the past, what my, my child has done in the past when he came back on earth, or what I've done presently to cause him to be born sick like that. A lot of times, our family, we, we come up with drug addiction, smoking cigarettes, all those different things happen when a woman is pregnant, whether it's sec whether she's smoking or not. Secondhand smoke, things of that nature, that can cause a sickness in a child. Right. The Most High God tells us not to defile our temple like the officer was bringing out. Right. Because the direct result of those things is sickness. What we must start doing is come back to the scriptures as the Israelites, so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Bible is our book. It's been taken from us in slavery by our captors and by our enemies. They took it, they painted their own images on the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where Christ is described like this. In the Bible, Christ is described as a black man, but what happened during slavery? Were we allowed to read and write? No, if we, and we were found reading, what happened? We were whipped damn near to death or put to death. upon us to the point we don't even want to question it. But this here, we get comfort in these scriptures. Read that. It's the book of Romans, chapter 15, and verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime time Go ahead. were written for our learning. So this Bible that our people reject, a lot of our people don't like to deal with the Bible at all. Would you Would you agree, bro? Yeah. 
A lot of our people think the Bible is what? A white man's book. Right. Or it's a book that was used to oppress the slaves. Right. No, this Bible here is a book that can help you fix your health. It helps you turn back to who you really are as a person. The Bible will tell you that you're not the color black. You're not a color black. Teach. You're not the image of a black man. You are an Israelite according to the Bible, meaning you are princes and princesses that have power with God. That's and right. And also that you and only you and your people are God's chosen people. Right. Read. <laughs> that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Our hope comes from the scriptures, sister. Yeah. But now let me show you something else. Give me sin. Give me sickness. Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Because the reason why our people have ailments now, it's not just our children born with different deficiencies and things of that nature. What runs rampant in the black community? What illness? Give me one. AIDS. AIDS, HIV, what else? Right. Right, killing, heart disease, cancer, diabetes. All of those things are direct results of the lifestyles that we're living as a nation of people. Right. And the answer and the rest and the solution to those things is the most high God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Read that, Deuteronomy 28, 61. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Because you asked a heavy question earlier. You was like, well, why is this only happening to our people? Right? The reason why, and he brought out the scripture. Matter of fact, get that back again. Amos chapter 3, old Deuteronomy, get Amos 3, verse 1. Because we have to explain that to our, our people don't know why we're the ones on the bottom of society today. We don't understand why we're being oppressed by the police, by the, why we get the worst jobs, why we live. Bro, I'm a few words. Please, bro, please. Read. It's the book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 1. Go ahead. Read. Hear those words that the Lord has spoken against you. Go ahead, read, read, read. O children of Israel. O children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family which I brought upon from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Most like God said the children of Israel is the only family that he has known of all the families on the earth. Read. Therefore, I will punish you. That's why we're being punished today. The way we're living, last hired, first fire, living in the ghettos and slums, Gang violence. Our women, our women afraid to walk the streets in our own neighborhoods. Our men are raping them. Our men are kidnapping our own sisters now and selling them off in sex, sex slavery and things of that nature. They're getting kidnapped now, and that's happening in our community. Why? Because we are the children of God, and we are, we refuse to come back to His laws, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Back to that six. Deuteronomy twenty-eight sixty-one. Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse sixty-one. Deuteronomy chapter two. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 61 Give me a little more energy. Go. Also every sickness and every plague Which is not written in the book of this law It says every sickness and every plague Which is not written in this Bible here What's going to happen to the children of Israel? Read Them will the Lord bring upon thee Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed That's why we're living like that now Because we break the most high God's laws now we get all type of sicknesses and plagues as a nation of people. The main cause of, of high blood pressure and heart disease is what? It's high cholesterol, eating shrimp and eating the foods that are high in cholesterol. Shrimp, crab, pork, lobster, those different foods, right? If we stop eating those things, which is a law of God, guess what will happen in our community? We'll stop having a grandma that got to get her foot cut off because of diabetes and things of that nature. Bring it out. Right, but the wages of sin, give me that in Romans 6. Get <coughs> water. How, how, many, how many times you were baptized? I was only baptized once. What, what, why one time? Explain one time. Because there's only one baptism. Go ahead. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. <coughs> yes. For the wages of sin is death. I said, but the wages of sin is death. What is sin, brothers and sisters? What is sin? God. When you disobey God's laws, get that first John 3 verse 4. And then we're gonna deal with that baptism. Yeah, okay. Because what's happening now is that our brothers and sisters are being baptized, or at least are taken to the water now. Well, the well, baptism well, uh, is if you take heed to the word that's brought out. That. First John well, chapter 3 you. and verse 4. Right. Whosoever committed sin. It says whosoever commits sin, guess what? Smoking weed is a sin, bro. Right. You know anybody got you know that, right? two times? And you know you smoke around her? You said one time. You do, right? Do you know that that you know, secondhand one smoke one, one, one. can hurt that woman? Do you know anybody that baptized you know that, right? two times? Do you love her? So why would you put her in harm's way by yeah. 
defiling your temple, first of all, because she needs you as her man. That's true. She doesn't want, she, I never, our women need that man, especially in our community, because the men are not in our community. Right. right. Especially a young brother with a young child and a young wife. So while you defile your temple, what happens now if you get some crazy lung disease or something like that and you can no longer be a man to provide and protect mm -hmm. your wife and your child? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Yeah, you understand man. that? And also, you smoking and things of that nature, do you smoke? You smoke, right? Secondhand smoke is more dangerous than the regular smoke that you inhale. So y'all killing yourselves double time. Bring it out. And what about that, that little baby right there? You see what I'm saying? Our people don't really think about those things. And they think that when we come out with the most size laws that we judging them. This ain't judgment. The judgment comes from God. You yes, understand Lord. that? Judgment is, okay, you committed that sin, we put you to death, right. or we put you in jail. Right. All we can do is teach the gospel to our people, let you know that what you're doing is wrong and against God, and pray that you fix it. Right. You understand that this is more correction than anything. Right, right but read that, read that again. First John chapter three and verse four. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin. So it says anyone that commits sin does what? Transgresses also the law. You break the laws of God. But we're taught that the laws of God are done away with. Bring it out. And that we are not to be judged according to the laws of God. That's the why we run around our communities now a lawless, degenerate nation of people. Right. Yeah. We don't know what it is to be married. That's what's a beautiful thing to see y'all two together and to see our couples together and our brothers and sisters getting married, being given to marriage and not running the streets around here dealing with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Because that's what God wants us to see. That's what God wants to see. Read that again. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of God's laws. Let's prove now that God's laws are not done away with, right? Give me John chapter five, because that's what they use all the time. They use that, they, not, they, they, they say that Christ fulfilled the laws of God. Matthew five. Matthew five, what you got, sis? Oh, you want to hear about baptism? Let's get baptism. First, give me Ephesians four. Do you know, well, hold on now. Do you know anybody got baptized question. two times? Do you know anybody? I understand that. Do you when know you, anybody got baptized with, two right, times? All right, take heed now. Sure, check the light on the flyer. Well, you want to hear about baptism, right? What is your... When you, all right, bro, we're about to deal with baptism. You give Relax. I see that now, then I go. Baptism, right? Yeah, baptism. Our sense of baptism is what? Going into the Christian church or going into the church or they go by the, the riverside. And what do they do? They dunk you in water, right? Well, do you know anybody that was baptized two times? Do you know anybody? Anybody? Ephesians chapter 4, verse... All right, read that. Yeah, It might start at verse 1. Start at verse 3. Start at verse 3. Ephesians verse three. chapter 4 and verse 3. Go ahead. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit Go ahead. in the bond of peace. So our job right now as a nation of people is to keep the unity of the Spirit. The Spirit right. is the words written in this Bible here. In the bond of peace. Our people don't know nothing about peace amongst each other. Whether it's amongst brothers itself in the streets or within our households, within our families. Right. Our brothers know nothing about peace or unity. We must fight to keep that thing though, read. There is one body. It says there is one body, which is Christ, read. And one spirit. There's only one spirit that we must follow. Right. Because if somebody gives us a different Christ, that brings a different doctrine and a different spirit, read. Right, even as he are called in one hope. All of us are supposed to be called in one hope. It shouldn't be a million different denominations in the Christianity church. Bring it out. It shouldn't be a household where the husband is a Muslim and the mother is a Christian and the children are Israelites and the, somebody's a Buddhist and on the other side. It's only one thing, read. Of your calling. Go ahead. One Lord. There's only one Lord and Savior, read. One faith. One faith that we all are supposed to believe in. Our faith is that the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans come back to their true heritage, which is Israelites, we come back to our God, which is the so-called black man that looks just like us, so that we can want, we can come around and rule the Most High God's kingdom of heaven. That's Not right. be equal to rule over our <coughs> oppressors. That's written in the Bible as well. Right. But we got to step up to that. Read. One baptism. There's what? One baptism. There's only one baptism. Right. There's only one way to be baptized. Now, give me that in um, Peter's. Is it Peter's? Not to put it away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First Peter's. How to put away the filth of the flesh. Because we're going to deal with what baptism is now. John was baptizing with water. We understand. John the Baptist. John the Baptist. But the way he was baptizing, I want that as well. I must increase. Yes, sir.
Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Um, do you know anybody that was Read. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. Go ahead. The like figure were unto even baptism. It says the like figure were unto even baptism. Does what? Does also now save us. Baptism does save us. It does. You know baptism saves us, right? Read. Do you know anybody Not about the putting baptism? away of the filth of the flesh. Read that again. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Read it again. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. How do we put do away the filth of our flesh now? Do you need With water, baptism? right? So he's, Peter is telling you the baptism where it saves us is not being dunked in water. That baptism is not going to save us to be dunked in water. Because how many Christians get baptized? That's why the brother had a question, how many times you've been baptized? Because our people go into church, uh, uh, a drug dealer or whatever, a sinner, they get dunked in water and they get up a wet drug dealer or a wet crackhead right. or a wet thot or whatever whatever we want to call it, right? Bring it out. But they never change. Right. They go back to that same lifestyle and what happens again? They go, they they, they, they they feel all type of pain and they go back and get dumped back in water again. That doesn't help us. Read that again, not the putting away. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But what? But the answer of a good conscience. It says, but the answer of a good conscience toward who? Toward God. The only way you can have a good conscience toward God, meaning your mind is moving to the point where God is looking at you and you're like, yo, I'm not guilty of anything, Lord. It's by what? Keeping his laws, doing what he wants you to do. Right. There's no way in the world your conscience is good towards God and you sat there just now when you done sold crack to another brother. Oh, only thing that come in your mind is, Lord, I'm a sinner and you can't judge me. That's what happens. Or when you're a baby mama or you got... Or you got a boy, three different boyfriends and you sleeping around whoring yourself out. All you can say is, don't judge me, Lord, I'm a sinner. But your conscience ain't good. That leads to you going away from God. Right. Says, but the putting away of the foot of the flesh don't help me. Give me the one in um, Isaiah, chapter 1. 1 16. 1 and 16. This is the true baptism today. Right. When Moses baptized our brethren, he didn't dunk none of us in water. I don't, they might not know that. Get that one with Moses baptized us. We all baptized under the sea. Read that. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. The most high God's solution to our issues has always been us turning back to his laws and cleaning ourselves up. Read. Wash you, make you clean. So he's telling you to wash you, make you clean, right? Not to put in the way of the filth of the flesh. Make you clean, do what? Put away the evil of your doings. Put away the evil of your doings. Read. From before my eyes. From before God. God sees everything. Our people think that the Most High God is not watching how we live in a day as a nation of people. Wake them up. Our people think that God wants us to live in sin. Right. The Christian pastors teach that the Most High God wants to see us live in sin. Right. But then explain this to us again. Read that from the top. Wash you, make you clean. We're supposed to strive to be clean as a people. Read. Put away the evil of your doing. We must stop doing evil. If that is taught in our communities, there'll be less murder. Right. There'll be less rape. There'll be less robbery. If we teach our kids, hey, you don't steal. First of all, when we start keeping God's laws, we get married and that man stays in the house. Right? And there's no single mothers raising young boys and girls. And then that man says, hey, sis, we're going to teach these kids today. Look, y'all are not going to rob. Y'all are not going to steal. That is not a good thing, it's a bad thing. And if you do that, we're gonna hold you accountable for that. Right. right. You understand that? We, you're held accountable to keeping God's laws. You read that again. Wash you, make you clean. Go ahead. Put away the evil of your doing read. from before mine eyes. Go ahead. Cease to do evil. It says stop doing evil, read. Learn to do well. It says learn to do well. Learn to do good. That means that there should be places or sanctuaries that you go to that teaches you how to walk with Christ and how you're supposed to be, how to keep his laws. Give me the one in Jeremiah now. Three? Yeah, three, uh, 222. Give me Jeremiah 2 and 22. Yeah. We're just showing you that the scriptures are redundant, meaning there is only one way to baptize, and it always was that. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 22. Bring it out. For though thou wast thee with night. It says... Because you wash yourself with nitrate, meaning you dunk yourself in water, read, and take thee much soap. Because you cleaned off the outer appearance, read. 
Yet thine iniquity. Yet your what? Thine iniquity. Yet your sins reach. Is marked before me. It's still marked before God. Your sins, so it doesn't matter how many times, like the brother asked, how many times you've been baptized? One, two times. How many times you've been dunked in water? It doesn't matter. Your sins are still marked before God. We must learn to do the right thing. Nation is men leading by example. 